Your Coca-Cola Bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, what was that? Mm-hmm. Nothing. The noisiest nothing I ever heard. Uh, darling, we're not in New York. We're in the country. Nothing happens in the middle of the night in the country. Nothing? Go back to sleep. Say, I wonder if Mama heard it. Mm-hmm. Heard what? The nothing that made a noise. Well, I don't hear anything now. Maybe I dreamt it. Or is it dreamed it? Imagined it. Oh, nonsense. A person doesn't imagine when they're asleep. I'm asleep, and I imagine that you're talking. At least I hope I'm imagining it. Good night, darling. Good night. So quiet. It's a shame to talk and not appreciate how quiet it is. I like to talk in the middle of the night. I know. There. Oh. I heard it this time. Really? I didn't hear anything. What was it? You really thought you heard something? It sounded like the garbage pail to me. Darling, they don't collect the garbage at two in the morning. As a matter of fact, I've discovered in the country they don't collect it at all. Well, I'm going to go see what it is. David, where are you going? I'm going downstairs to see what's going on. Oh, maybe it's, maybe it's... Maybe it's what? I don't know, but it's so dark in the middle of the night. A very profound observation. Don't go, David. Darling, it isn't anything. Probably just a squirrel. None of the squirrels I've known would be prowling around in the middle of the night. David, if it's a robber, just be nice and invite him in. If it's a robber, he's in for a great disappointment. We don't have anything for him to rob. (laughs) David, can you hear me? What is it? Did you take a flashlight? David, I'm coming down. Darling, you all right? Oh, it's so quiet and dark. David, is that you? Darling, what are you doing standing down here in the hall? Why why didn't you stay in bed? Are you all right? Certainly I'm all right. Who was it? Or rather, what was it? It was a what was it. Oh. Come on. Let's go up. I'm sleepy. Well, what was it? I asked him to please go, and he did. Now, please be serious. He was a lot smaller than I was. That's good. No, no confidence in your husband. None at all. Mm. These stairs are getting steep. Into bed with you. I won't get into bed until you tell me what the what was and what the what wanted. He was hungry. Who was? Did you give him something to eat? He helped himself. I, I, I don't get it. In words of one syllable, what happened come downstairs? On, come on into bed. Oh, all right. There, I'm in bed. Now tell me. Because if you don't tell me this time, there won't be any sleeping in this house until you do. What was that? It was the cat. What was that? It was the cat. Shakespeare? No. Just a neighbor. A traveler in the night. Oh. You sound disappointed. Oh, I'm not disappointed, but it's such a rumpus for just one little cat. (laughs) I hope he found something to eat, poor little thing. He was a big cat and quite able to take care of himself. Anyway, I think you were very nasty to shoo him away. How would you like if somebody did that to Shakespeare? Mm, Well, if I were Shakespeare, I might take it amiss. But I, being me, I... Wouldn't give it a second thought. Very unsympathetic of you? Anyway, I think our visitor was more lonely than hungry. You do? Mm Mm-hmm. You must get around to letting Shakespeare out so that he can meet his neighbor. Shakespeare is a house cat. (laughs) It's high time he got to be a farm cat. How would you like to be locked up in the house all the time? I wouldn't. Well, I don't see what's so wonderful about being an outside cat. That poor little cat that was here tonight. But cat likes that sort of thing. I don't believe it. They like 
prowling around at night. Oh, nonsense. It's the nature of the beast. Shakespeare is not a beast. That's exactly what's the matter with him. Let him out of the house so he can run in the fields and discover the world he lives in. Shakespeare would rather stay in the house with us and be a house cat. Mm. Shakespeare would rather go out and catch himself a nice field mouse. It might interest you to know that Shakespeare does not like mice. One walked in front of him the other day. No interest at all. You ought to be ashamed to admit it. What do you mean? First thing in the morning, I'm going to let that cat out of the house and introduce him to nature. You will not. He'll get lost. Well, if he gets lost, he'll find himself again. You can't lock him up forever, you know. Shakespeare does not consider himself locked up. Oh, much. Now, look at that cat tonight. He's learned to take care of himself. Nature meant him to I go don't out. trust nature so much. Do you trust me? Mm, I don't know. You have a funny look in your eye. <laughs> it's just sleep. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, I have to catch the train in the morning, so shh. Oh, all right. If you don't uh, want to talk... I don't. How'd you guess it? I was just about to say, Dad. If you're not sleepy, count sheep. It helps. All right. One, two, three, four, five. Count six. them under your breath. That helps more. Aren't you a little stuffy? One, two, three, four, four five, six. Well, how'd you like another cup of coffee? I would love another cup of coffee. You would? Mm -hmm. What's the matter? What's the matter? Couldn't you sleep? Counting sheep helps. Oh, I slept all right. Finally. <laughs> oh, careful. The coffee's boiling hot. Ouch. That'll be enough. Cream? Mm. Meow, meow. Oh, good morning, cat. His name is Shakespeare. It's such a big name for such a little cat. Meow. He wants some of that cream, so go easy on it. You feed him cream? I passed the cream pitcher under his nose when I put down his saucer of milk. He's such a dope, he thinks he's drinking the cream. <laughs> the way you spoil that cat. I should think you'd stop Molly coddling him. Well, what's the matter with him? Nothing. He often meows when he sits on the window just looking out. He wants out. Ridiculous he's perfectly happy, and he's just talking to himself, that's all. Well, I often talk to myself, don't you? Oh, all the time, all the time. Of course. Maybe our visitor from last night is outside. You think that's who Shakespeare sees? Mm -hmm. We'll soon find out. Shakespeare, my boy, how would you like to go forth into the cold, cold world? David, if you dare. What? Besides, I'll bet even if you open the front door wide, he won't go out. Mm, how much you want to bet, hmm? Well, I don't want to bet anything. I just don't want you to open that door. Sissy. Shakespeare, you don't want to go out, do you, sweetie? Come on, Shakespeare. Here is your chance. You don't have to go out, Shakespeare, if you don't want to. Nobody's going to make you. David, if anything happens no, to him... Nothing will, nothing will. There. You see? He hasn't moved. Come on, boy. Come on. Now, there's a beautiful big friend out there waiting for you. Come on. I told you he was a house cat and you wouldn't believe me. See? David, he went. <laughs> of course he went, like a shot. He's running across the driveway. I'll never see him again. Well, now, stop worrying, darling. If he eats one of our birds, I'll never forgive you. Shakespeare, come back here. David, I can't see him anymore. Well, he's out in the world now. He's put on long pants. What's so wonderful about long pants? Oh, he's a big boy. He's climbing a tree. David, stop him. <laughs> That's that a boy. <laughs> Cats love climbing trees. He's almost to the top. Shakespeare, come on down. You know, I never really thought he'd make it all the way up there. That's the trouble with you. No confidence in man or nature. He made it look awfully easy, too. What about coming down? Oh, it's even easier. Well, I guess I'd better start catching that train. Aren't you going to wait till he comes down from the tree? What for? Well, just in case that... David, now he's crying. Is that crying? And he's shaking like a leaf. He wants to come down and he can't. Well, why on earth can't he? Well, why? Why? Because he doesn't know how, obviously. Well, let him learn how. Very funny. 
Oh, look at him. His hair sticking up like a, a, a pin cushion. Oh, Shakespeare, everything's going to be all right now. Just come down slowly. Mm, one paw at a time. Daisy, if you're not going to do anything about it, I'm going to call the fire department. You will do nothing of the sort. People always call the fire department when cats are caught, caught in trees. Well, we're not people, and Shakespeare is not just an ordinary, everyday cat. He certainly isn't. Now, our cat can get himself down from that tree, or he can jolly well stay up there until he gets the courage to get himself down. It's not a matter of courage. It's a matter of talent. Oh, he has that, too. The trouble is, all of a sudden, you've got so proud and manly about Shakespeare. <laughs> well, I've got, to, I've got to catch my train. If Shakespeare is still up in the tree when I get home tonight, I'll climb up after him. But you can't leave him up there all day. Well, how would you like to take the car out of the garage, darling? Don't do me any favors, thank you. I'm not going near that car until Shakespeare is on dry land again. Every cloud has a silver lining. I know what I'll do. I'll put a little saucer of cream under the tree. He'll come down for that. Molly Coddling. You'll be down in a minute, Shakespeare. Stop fussing. I'm going to get you some lovely cream. Well, you'd better hurry or you won't get a chance to say goodbye to me. I'm I'm putting on my coat. Be right there. I didn't realize it was so late. <coughs> well, <coughs> look who's here. <coughs> Hello, Shakespeare. <coughs> hey, darling. Guess who just walked in the front door? Who? Shakespeare. Hey, and look who else is here. <coughs> well, you talented <laughs> cat. I knew you'd come down. Hello. Who's your friend, Shakespeare? That's our visitor from last night. Shakespeare's visitor now. <laughs> he has quite a lot of influence on him, hasn't she? I guess maybe cats get lonesome, too. For other cats, I mean. And in the spring, boys like girls. And I'm certainly glad you like me, darling. Because without you, I'd certainly be up a tree. <laughs> Dum, dum, da, dum, dum, la, 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 la. Having a party? You may have to stop and figure out what the eats will be. But when it comes to drinks, just ask your grocer or service station attendant to put a case of Coke in the car. With plenty of Coca-Cola in the house, you have the refreshment situation well in hand. And Coke is only a nickel a bottle, a point well worth considering these days when we're all budget conscious. Say, Joe... Did you ever own a cat? Well, once I did, David, but uh, Skeezix, that was his name, went out and instead of bringing his friends home, Skeezix never came back. <laughs> oh, a gypsy cat. Well, I think Shakespeare will come home every time, especially after tomorrow when he sees just where our property ends. Hmm. Why? What's happening tomorrow, David? I've made an appointment with Matthew Warren. He's our neighbor uh, to the north. We're meeting to... Mend our walls. Mm, an old New England custom, isn't it? Two neighbors meeting to rebuild their fences. I'm looking forward to it, too. And so's Claudia. And so am I. I'll see you tomorrow, David, where the Nortons meet the Warrens. And where Claudia learns that good fences make good neighbors. So long, Joe. Bye, David. As I was saying, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya and Roger Starr, and the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>